Watching the world burn, watching the world burn, July 17th, 2024, let's get into it. All right, I just, I don't want to waste any time. Uh, if you recall, uh, back when, when Trump was shot on Saturday, I said that uh, there was a second shooter. I had no idea there might be a third shooter. All right, let's watch Redacted right now. Now, I'm giving them attribution. This is, I've, I've stolen a lot of material from them, which I don't like to do, but they were so, I mean, I was so fascinated by their analysis of what really took place on that uh, dreaded day. I want you to watch the whole thing. And I encourage you, Redacted, uh, INC, they're on uh, Rumble and they're on YouTube. I'm giving them attribution. Watch the whole video. He said, we saw him climbing up the roof with a gun and we notified police. We told them. So he saw a gun, confirmed that to the BBC. They had a gun. They saw a long rifle. They didn't know exactly what it was, who he was, but they alerted police. So there was awareness about a gun. Maybe not everyone saw the gun. Right. You know, to your point. Maybe but I'm outing myself as a coward because if I see that, a strange dude on a roof with a gun and well, everyone's yeah, we know going like that, and I'm going to be running the other direction. Yeah. But I'll also pull out my phone. Yeah, so. well, for sure. So now we're learning a lot more about this Trump shooter, and it's very mysterious. So there's more pieces we're going to get to here in a second, and wait till you see what I'm going to show you in just a few moments here. But Thomas Matthew Crooks, the Wall Street Journal, now deeping, doing a deeper dive on this mystery around the Trump shooter. So what we learned today from both the New York Times and the Wall Street Journal is that they have zero information. They've now tapped into his phone. They had zero information that he was going to kill the president. There's nothing on the guy's phone about this. Nothing. According to according to them. Nothing. Nothing on his phone. Nothing on his social media. No one saw or knew anything out of the ordinary with this guy. Both at home, his work, his friends, community. Nobody saw anything zilch. There's no manifesto. There's nothing. But yet he had bombs. And on the morning of the attack, he stopped to the gun store, bought ammunition, according to reports. This guy, Thomas Matthew Crooks, by the way, he also had no ID on his body. According to the New York Times, Crooks had no criminal record. But according to the FBI, he also had no ID on his body when they identified him. When they identified him using DNA and biometric data. So let me just get that right. Hang out there for a second. He had no criminal record. He had no identification on his body, but somehow they were able to use DNA to quickly identify him in some sort of a DNA database. They have a DNA database? What? So when did that happen? As Sparta Justice uh, pointed out, former CIA agent John Ramirez explaining what they ha how they have a DNA database that they were able to build thanks to vaccination programs using vaccines as a way of collecting DNA. Uh, and I know that, you know, recently a former uh, director of central intelligence revealed that CIA did have a program to collect DNA overseas by using a vaccination program as a cover. There was a <laughs> real vaccination program, but... Through this vaccination program, they were able to retrieve DNA huh. from this region of the world. Yeah. So uh, that was was what was discussed. So as people in the chat point out, wait a minute, you can get that information within an hour? They're able to get that information and identify this individual within an hour using DNA? Wow, sounds, sounds almost like the passport story. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, how oh, you mean the passports from 9-11 that have mysteriously yeah. fallen? The, yeah, they're yeah, not they're burned. Like, and they were just, just right there. there. It's like, oh. And, and remember, like, how long does it take to run a DNA test? It's not like they have to look it under a microscope, don't they? It's not like they can't just like pull out the blood and be like, oh, here, it's this is what it looks like. A portable field DNA operatives, you know? I yeah. mean, yeah. Maybe it was a in lot the of building downstairs about... in the field office. <laughs> I mean, a lot of questions about how they were able to identify this individual so quickly. No ID on the guy, and they were able to, to get DNA testing and complete this and confirm with biometrics. And then yesterday, by the way, the FBI tweeted out a photo celebrating 100 years of biometrics. Like the FBI on the same day, like tweeting out about how their history of biometrics and, and collecting information about criminals. This is like a big celebration. They tweeted out like, what? Okay, thanks, FBI. Anyway, yesterday, I reported here on the show privately that sources were telling me that Secret Service identified the bullets being fired, which came from about 488 yards away. Yards. 
not feet, yards. Okay, approximately 488 yards, not feet. Yesterday, another source brought me some great information showing that the Butler Gymnastics Club is precisely that same distance away, about 488 yards away. You can take a look at Google Maps and you can see this is the Butler Gymnastics Center, okay, for much further than we've been talking about in this line of sight. Now look at these windows, look at the look at the roof line. This is all from a vantage point facing the stage where President Trump was located. Okay, and we'll just sort of spin this around here so you can just get a sense of the depth here as we go towards the fairgrounds where President Trump was speaking. Now, same line of sight. So thanks for the tip, by the way. I'm sure you're watching right now. Thank you for this tip. So Butler Gymnastics, I want to take a look now at a map that we put together just so you get an understanding of the line of sight, the Trump stage, Thomas Crook's roof location, and Butler Gymnastics Club, line of sight, straight line. And now let's just plug in the distance to confirm this, in which I did, using uh, latitude and longitude and using the distance calculator to uh, identify the distance on this location, from this location. And uh, very simple to do once you have the actual coordinates, plug in the coordinates between Butler Gymnastics Club. And we're not saying, by the way, that, that's, that anything happened there. We don't know. But that is a perfect line of sight. And and here's the distance then to the stage. You're able to place this right here and then calculate the distance from the Butler Gymnastics Club across that field right to the stage at the fairgrounds where President Trump was speaking. And as you can see, the distance there right above it is um, about 0.2885 fifth of a mile, which is about almost exactly uh, 500 yards, roughly, give or take a few yards, depending on where if there was a shooter in that location where those yards would have, you know, could have been 490, 495, something like that. So more information. We contacted the Butler Gymnastics Club today, waiting for a response from them because right now they're closed for the summer on Saturdays. So that location is closed for the summer on Saturdays, meaning it was a vacant building, no one there to attract attention to uh, on Saturday when President Trump was there giving a speech this past Saturday. So we're still waiting for a response from them. If anyone was in that building, we'd love to know about it. Um, so just to paint a picture here, the Crooks rooftop was only 150 yards away where, where Thomas Crooks' body was found. Crooks was killed many feet away from the edge of the building, by the way. He was not on the edge of the building, which means he was laying prone up the slope, which up the slope which makes no sense. He was at the bottom part of that slope facing upward. And as the New York Times shows here in this photo, you can clearly see where his body in the upper left-hand part of your screen was located. Further down when he was shot, further down the slope um, facing towards the, the stage, which makes no sense. So if he was laying prone, which he was, he would have been facing up a slope about another 10 to 15 feet before you even reached the peak of that building. Here's another photo just vantage point where they're standing over his body, facing upwards on the slope. Go ahead, David. I, I was just going to point out if you go back to that other photo, Philip, the the previous one, that it's it's the it confused me too. It's the top left circle. Yeah. Because I was looking yeah, there with yeah. all the other circles and I couldn't figure out. So it's the top left circle over there. Yeah, upper left hand corner of your screen is where his body was found. The, the other circles that you're seeing by the American flag are snipers. Those are Secret Service snipers there. Um, so yeah, the upper left-hand part of your screen is where Thomas's body was found. Now he would have been firing up a slope, up a slope, which makes no sense, right? He wasn't at the peak of the building. He was further way down towards the end of that, that roof line. Just again, let's go back to the line of sight here from this photo from a viewer who was there and snapped this photo of right moments before the president was shot. You can see again, sloped up, from the so back side of that, from the from the pinnacle to down to the left, down to the left, and behind. away from the president and behind, behind, right. So, so why are you saying? I'm sorry, this is a dumb question because I've never planned to shoot anybody. Why are you saying you wouldn't go on the back side of that slope and maybe use that as cover for your own body? Well, because if you're going, if you're trying to. If you, I'm making a really awkward uh, hand signal there, so please forgive me. But if you're, <laughs> yeah, you're going make up a, a fist when you do that, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, if you're going up a slope, 
and you're trying to, and you're way down at the bottom of that slope and the president is on the other side of that peak yeah. down here. How are you going to shoot him through, through the slope? I mean, again, I haven't had I mean, a chance to go on that building you, myself. Right, because you can't shoot through the apex of the triangle. Exactly. I and, understand and I, and what I should you're be very saying. clear. It's not a huge slope. I haven't been on that rooftop to confirm that. But even if, so even if that piece doesn't care much to you at all, okay, maybe you just throw that piece out. Okay. Well, throw that piece out. And I was because, hold on, hold on. Okay. Go ahead. Well, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, like, is it possible that he was at the, the peak and, and peaking right over the peak and then the impact of the bullet slid him back? That's what I was going to ask. It's possible. Right. But every video we see, he's right at the base of that roof line when they're pointing him out. And then, of course, you know, so I don't know. Yeah, I guess he could have been hit in the head and somehow slid all the way down. But that seems unlikely. But who knows, right? Um, so he's at the bottom of it. But even if that part doesn't matter to you, okay, just throw that out. Well, okay. Hold on. Let me just get to this next piece because this yeah. to me is the most important part of it all. So even if that part doesn't compute, we now have three separate eyewitnesses who have now confirmed moments after the shooting they saw shots being fired from another location, not that roof. The water tower direction in the same line of sight as the Butler Gymnastics location that we showed earlier, further distance away, not from that roof line. And we need to find out what they saw and can we confirm that was there anyone on that water tower or not? So multiple now eyewitnesses saying that they saw shooters from another location, bullets fired from the water tower. Watch. Hit the ground and he kept standing up you got to get down, boy. you got to get down. They're going to shoot you. Because if they would have had, like, a machine gun, they could have taken us all out. So then um, we laid there for a while. We saw different places where the gunshots were at. And then they got uh, Pre President Trump down, Secret Service did, and they took him out of there and got him off of the stage. And he was bleeding. And so then my son and daughter-in-law was back behind us, back behind the fence. And we was worried about them. We couldn't call them. And so we started trying to go after them then when they finally let us up. And they had been right by the fence where the other shooter was. There was one I heard in the water tower. There was one by the fence. And still, obviously, initial reports. But we'll be doing One by the water tower. Exactly. So that's just one eyewitness. Here's another eyewitness witnessing the water tower. Watch. Our shooter shot to the left. He killed the gentleman in the water tower here. Now, when I called my husband at home, who's watching TV, he said... I thought Trump hurt his ear when he went to the ground, but he said no. On TV, they showed before Trump hit the ground, the ear was bleeding. So that sharpshooter went across. Trump turned his head. His ear must have been nipped, and it killed somebody in the stands over to the left. Could you see anyone injured besides the blood on the former president? All I saw was the gentleman from Beaver County who spoke earlier in the day. He was running for the State House representative, Elmore. I know his name. He had a white shirt on, and I saw him come from that left stands where the people were mostly shot. I think there were several. They said three medevacs left here. Blood was down the right side of his... He wasn't shot, but you could see that he was next to somebody who must have been bleeding profusely because he either helped them and ran, you know, rubbed against them or tried to get them help or something. It was covered. So I knew that he was near somebody. That was my first indication, indication that somebody was actually shot when I saw his blood on his shirt. Aaron, when did you realize that, hey, this might not be fireworks, this might be something else? When they got Trump down on the ground. And then we were just so concerned that he wasn't hit because we couldn't. It happens so fast, you know, it's really hard to process it. You know, I guess when they, if you have it on the, your camera to see the exact minute, you can tell. But when he got up, he did not look oh, bad at What all. I've heard coming out here is now they feel that there was two shooters on both sides. So they got the one on the tower on this side, but the one on the right side they never got. So they, that's why they wanted us to leave immediately because they thought there's still a shooter out there somewhere. So there could be in these woods around Butler. And I feel sad for our country. I feel sad for everybody, you know. I mean, yeah. you don't like the guy, don't vote for him. Don't kill him. We love the guy. We're going to vote for him. You know, I mean, what, what, what is up with his violence? I mean, it's just, it's just terrible. I, mean, I just, I just wish that yeah. people that. Oh, so that was well said on her part. Yeah. Water tower, water tower, water tower, that location. And to go at it, seeing eyewitnesses, seeing it, hearing it, and also then being told to move out of that area because they think there's another shooter in that location. So, 
we need to get to the bottom of that. As far as the roof and the the apex of the roof, you know, there's conjecture. Was he on a knee when he fired shots? Was he further back from the peak? Again, that's a, an important piece of it. Um, you know, you can we can talk about all that. We, I think it's important to put that information out there, though, where he is on that roof line and how far back he is mm-hmm. um, and whether or not why the Secret Service was not covering that roof line at all and why they had handed that over or said that that was part of local police tactical response team, yeah. a sniper response team. Well, that, so in that image that the, the viewer sent you, though, it looks it looks as though from that line of sight, um, let me pull that back up because it looked like from that line of sight, um, that that building is not, he's not facing, you know, like the peak is is across the horizon so that you could be leaning over any part of it. Am yeah. I saying that correctly? Yeah. I mean, you could be, le- yeah. I mean, facing this way, exactly. So leaning over the edge. Yeah. yeah. But it's, yeah, it's hard to say. But if he's in the back left, as we see in that New York Times photo, um, you know, again, that's back to the left of this particular building. So a lot of things we, we don't have answers to yet. Uh, we're still digging into this. We're not going to let this go because we have eyewitnesses. And they're, they're all, I think the re, uh, official response on this is very telling. When they're all telling you that this is one guy, here's, here's who did it, here's his DNA results, we know who he is, we're going through his phone right now, here's the information. Okay, great. What about all the eyewitnesses that say something else happened? Mm-hmm. What about the Secret Service individuals and sources who said these fi- these bullets were fired at over 400 yards away? Well, also what gets my spidey sense up is as soon as the government and the media says these are these conspiracies are false, we're only four days out. That all conspiracies should be open questions at this point. Everything should be okay to ask and not decide which things are not okay to ask and which things are conspiracies. So as soon as I see that the number one video on the Wall Street Journal's page today is all the conspiracies, debunking the conspiracies around the Trump shooting, we don't know anything. Everything is open game at this point. Then I'm like, okay. These are the questions they don't want us to ask, so let's ask them. Yeah, once they start mocking you for asking questions, you know you're on to something here. Right. Right? Go ahead, Phil. Well, I just and, an investigation takes time. Anytime, I, I'm yeah. always super skeptical anytime within like an hour or two after an event, they know exactly what happened. Like the hell right. you do. You know, you know what you know right now. You don't know anything that you haven't looked into yet. Like look into things and then get back to us. Like yes. do an investigation. So, and I mean, it's very right possible that we're so. asking some good questions and some not good questions, but all the questions should be out there right now. Though there's no bad questions. There's never bad questions, right? Then uh, you know, I, 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 I do it sometimes reluctantly. I, I hate when I say this sometimes. Let me ask a dumb question. There's no, no dumb questions. Well, yeah. I mean, I don't know anything about, you know, snipers and security, you know, but like that, we're that's all how you learning learn. together. You learn by asking questions. And something what, that we were talking about in our redacted chat today, just the, the producers of this show, is I would like to see what it looks like to secure a site in a good way. Like, what does it look like when Obama goes to speak somewhere that's out in the open? Is there a Pac-Man configuration or is all or are all stones turned? Uh, You know, what does that pre-site survey look like? How did they choose who goes with Obama? This is all pertinent information. Unfortunately, it's secret information, so they don't tell us. But we need to be able to juxtapose this between what's normal and right and proper and good and safe and what happened over the weekend. Also, we should point out regarding that slope comment earlier, we were talking about the slope of this roof. You know, the Secret Service director says that the rooftop itself was too steep for the Secret Service to be on. The rooftop where Thomas Crook's body was found. That's from the Secret Service director that was too steep for the Secret Service to be on. Really? It's just as steep as the other building where the snipers were located. It makes no sense at all. I thought this... I thought the slope of the one where the Secret Service was, where the police were, was even more sloped. It looked mm-hmm. right, like it, it, is, because it was a, it was a smaller building. building. I mean, that's that's likely like a three twelve pitch. The the, the, the building the, the the guy was was shooting from. Like to put it in perspective, I my grandparents had a five twelve pitch, which is a, a steeper roof, and I shingled their roof in sandals and didn't okay. fall off. like a three to a three twelve <laughs> roof. You could run across it without any fear of falling. You're not going to fall unless you're, is like, that rise over to, run it's, the, what you're giving us there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then three twelve is like three inches for, per foot. It's not a steep roof at all. So, yeah. I mean, that's, 
there's there's no way that was too steep to put a sniper on. It was a, a dog could walk across it just fine. <laughs> okay, a dog. <laughs> well, all right. So that that kind of verified uh, everything that I put out uh, in my tweets, and I've been tweeting about this, and I've been saying there was a second shooter. Uh, no way that this this young twenty year old uh, lunatic could climb up on top of a building. Now, I, I, I do want to add to the redacted analysis of what they're talking about. Now, they did say that he was shot in the mouth by the, by the uh, sniper. Now, that bullet would just, I mean, because this is a sharpshooter rifle, it's only from 150 yards away, it would have just gone right through his head and just blown the head, his brain out. Um, so there's no way he slides down the building all the way down to the other side because the slope really wasn't all that intense. Okay, uh, and that bullet just goes through. I mean, I mean, if you ha if you've killed people like I have, you know, it doesn't take I, that bullet. I mean, it just goes through, and the body just sits right there. The body, I mean, it doesn't like lift the body up and slide down the side of the building. That does not happen. Okay, so what I'm telling you is, it's bullshit that that kid made those shots. Uh, and as Redacted showed you. He, it looked like, I mean, I, now I don't know if, if he got up to the top uh, and whether he made those five shots. Uh, and, and by the way, the, from what I can tell, uh, and I tell you, I've been analyzing a hell of a lot of footage on the, uh, the incident because the, the people that were killed were on the left side of the stadium, which indicates to me that the shots may have come from the right hand side. I don't know, man, I'm telling you, I'm still analyzing this like you are. But I thought Redacted did a great job. You know, when that bullet exited his head, it did not blow him back down the roof where they found the body. No way, no how. I, that's not possible. Anyway, so let's keep going. Uh, uh, the, the second story, uh, J.D. Vance is now the new vice president of the United States. Uh, I think that's wonderful, man. Uh, I, a very, very good choice. Uh, but, you know, one of the things you won't get on any other channel is what, what does the rest of the world think of J.D. Vance? And so I wanted to give you a Russian TV perspective of J.D. Vance. Let's watch that video. Well, ahead of the event on his appearance at the convention, Donald Trump confirmed Ohio State Senator J.D. Vance as his pick for vice president should he win the election. After lengthy deliberation and thought, and considering the tremendous talents of many others, I have decided that the person best suited to assume the position of Vice President of the United States is Senator J.D. Vance of the great state of Ohio. As Vice President, J.D. will continue to fight for our Constitution, stand with our troops, and will do everything he can to help me make America great again. He's a clone of Trump on the issues. A clone of Trump on the issue. So I don't see any difference. Well, let's take a closer look at Donald Trump's new running mate. J.D. Vance is perhaps best known for denouncing Trump back in 2016 before his presidential win. But later, the Republican Party's new VP nominee admitted that he had changed his mind after seeing how Trump fared while in the Oval Office. Serving as a senator since 2023, J.D. Vance has harshly criticized the Biden administration's constant support of the Ukraine conflict. I think that it is absurd for us to devote so many resources, so much attention, and so much time to a border conflict 6,000 miles away. There was, in fact, a peace deal on the table approximately 18 months ago. And what happened to it? The Biden administration pushed Zelensky to set aside the peace agreement and to engage in a disastrous counteroffensive. Every single objective observer of the Ukraine war acknowledges today that the war is going worse for Ukraine than it was 18 months ago. Could we have avoided it? Yes, we could, Mr. President, and we should have avoided it. We would have saved a lot of lives, we would have saved a lot of American weapons, and we would have had this country in a much, much more stable and much better place if we had. All right, so that is the Russian perspective of J.D. Vance. Uh, let's get into some other news here. You know, I've got my, my tweets here, um, or my ex post. Uh, uh, Trump, Trump called the widow of the rally victim. Now, we have to understand, you know, as, as, as much as, uh, you know, the tragedy of that young kid dying because somebody warped his brain, they probably gave him some LSD or some other drugs. And uh, I, now, I, that's another thing I wanted to go into. I mean, 
there's no social profile on this kid. There's no ID. They said they identified him by DNA after his head was blown off. I, you believe that shit? <laughs> I certainly don't. Oh my God. Uh, some 20 year old uh, loon, loner, you know, doesn't have a freaking social profile. It got erased by the NSA. It got erased by the federal government. He was a patsy. He was just the Lee Harvey Oswald of the, of the CIA. I'm going to tell you that right now. But anyway, Trump called the widow because we have to understand, even though Trump survived, uh, one person died, man. One person died, and uh, my hearts and prayers go out to that individual, and uh, Trump uh, has called the widow of the uh, rally victim. Uh, family praises his kindness, and by the way, they wouldn't take a call from Joe Biden. Uh, they did take the call from Trump, and Trump has reached out to the family of the Corey, uh, I, I got to spell this, C-O-M-P-E-R-A-T-O-R-E, the man killed, Corey Comparator, uh, the man killed at the incident in Trump's Pennsylvania rally. I just wanted to name him. Uh, God bless him. God bless his soul. Uh, anyway, man, I tell you, I'm, just, I'm crying at this point. All right, let's just keep going. Ah, Wall Street Silver, they're going to cheat again in 2024. No shit. <laughs> you know, the Democrats cheat on everything. That's the, that's the evil Democrats, man. Uh, they're going to work their games in certain blue counties and swing states. The margin of victory must be greater than the ability to manufacture votes. It's not about manufacturing votes. They've got 30 million illegal aliens that are going to vote in the next election. I keep saying that over and over and over again. we got to overcome 30 million illegal alien votes. And in Michigan, Whitmer just passed a law that you can't even question the fact that, that there's, there's illegal votes in Michigan. I, you know, I don't even understand the people of Michigan anymore. All right, let's just keep going. This is Simplicius, the, the thinker. Uh, the Russian army defeated the enemy in Kilenk Ovaka and broke through the defenses of the Ukrainian armed forces crossing the Servesky Donbass Channel on the flank of Chasovar. The 200th Brigade of Leningrad Military District and the Landing Force are developing an offensive on the flank of Chasovar, knocking out the Ukrainian Armed Forces from the village of Kalinovaka, where the cleanup is being completed and the units of the Ivan Ovo Airborne Division broke through the enemy's defense line along the canal in the south of Kalinovaska. Enemy sources also admit information about the breakthrough. And then, of course, it goes on from there. So you can see the Russians are still advancing on all fronts. Uh, Alexander Makoris uh, on the Duran, I mean, you know, he's got his own channel. I do I would encourage you to watch his channel. He was talking about, now he called it the SU-31 uh, revamped fighter. Uh, I thought that the Russians had just built the SU-35 uh, to counter the F-16s, uh, but he said that 10 SU-31s have been completely revamped and, and, and you know, they're, they're out on the front lines ready to take down the F-16s. So I was looking for any footage that I could find. Now, I, all I could find on RT was this fighter right here. Let's watch it. Okay, so that, that's a Russian fighter. I have no idea if that is the new SU-31. It looks pretty formidable. Uh, the SU-31 is supposed to be a very big plane. 
uh, uh, capable of, of uh, very fast speeds, much faster than the F-16. So I imagine if those F-16s ever make it to Ukraine, I don't think they're going to last very long. <laughs> I mean, the Russians have some pretty formidable stuff. And speaking of formidable stuff, let's watch a Russian tank right now. All right, so that, that was a Russian tank. I uh, just want to get into just a couple more stories. Uh, and, and I covered this uh, in a previous video, but I just wanted to tell you one more time. Israel carried out another unprecedented massacre this morning and killed more than 70 civilians, including many children. And I put up that video, I think it might have been yesterday or the day before. Uh, this massacre in Gaza. Genocide Joe, man. Genocide Joe, you're a Democrat? You gonna vote for Joe Biden? I don't think, I, I, I don't understand it. And uh, let's just get out of my bookmarks and I wanna get into just a couple of my posts. Yeah, well, I did a video, AT&T announces massive data cybersecurity breach. I encourage you to, encourage you to watch that video. Um, by the way, this was put up by Clandestine. He says MAGA is not the GOP. And the GOP is dead. The RNC is, a, is now merely a vessel. This is a populist movement. And, I, and so I, I, I commented on his, his comment, and I said, that I will name them the opposing... Because he, he wouldn't say who the opposing force was. They're called Democrats, people. Democrats. They have to... The Marxist, communist, fascist Democrats must be defeated. In the next election. One way or another. Even though they're going to cheat like hell. Alright. And then so here once again. Redacted for the story of. And by the way. It was the Butler Gymnastics Club. As the possible place for the second shooter. Uh, I put that up. We don't need to do any more. Peace out. Stay free.